I'd argue there's two products in this hobby that do so much for us, we often overlook the massive benefits we get from them, or can get from them. The first is light, because no matter how hard you might try, you can't paint in the dark. And second is post attack or blue tack. But why am I talking about both? Well, I was recently sent a lamp to review from Ben Q. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out a way to make an entire video about a light. Instead, I thought I'd combine the two topics and film everything only using the Ben Q e reading light, because using a light is the best way to review a light. So today I'm going to do a top 15 countdown on the best uses of blue tack in our hobby, whilst throwing in random review points of the Ben Q e reading lamp. Yeah, I've got no idea whether this is going to work. Just go with me. If nothing else, you might say we fail spectacular. I'm Will, and welcome to The State of Play, where today I'm going to attempt to juggle two things at the same time and make a review video that's a little bit different. So before we start the blue tack countdown, let's introduce the BenQ e-reading lamp. Now, BenQ is a brand you'll know. Monitors, projectors, presentation systems, other types of lighting, and more. It's a brand most of us associate with quality, or at least I do, as I've used their monitors for years in the creative industry. So. When they offered to send me a light that could work for my hobby, I said, okay, sure. You see, they caught me just at a point while I was genuinely looking for a lamp without a G-clamp. You know, you know the ones I mean, that clamp onto the side of your desk and you screw it until it's held in place. Because where I paint has drawers at the front and a windowsill at the back, so I can't clamp anything there. I had to drill a hole through my desk surface and bolt my neat file lamp in place. It's now pretty much immovable without disassembly. I now can't shift it around the room easily, hence needing a second lamp. This BenQ lamp is the first one I've seen that comes with an actual stand. Heavy, solid, yet movable. And yes, it does offer both a G clamp and a floor stand if you wanted those options. Now I have a lamp I can move around the room to where I need it, which for someone like me who films and photographs stuff in different places is fantastic. So let's start the blue tack countdown, working from my least used to my favorite methods for post attack. And we can talk about the lamp as we go. Wish me luck. At number 15, we have the obvious one, the one the product was initially designed for, sticking posters and reference papers on your wall. Well, actually that's a lie. Blue tack wasn't designed at all, it was an accident. In 1969, Bostick were trying to create a new sealant and failed miserably. But the stuff they made accidentally started getting used by staff to stick notes around the office. And now this non-toxic sticky blob is a household name. You learn something new every day. I use this to stick up my ink mixing chart, my colour charts, reference images, colour wheels, and anything I need to have nearby to help me out. Because I wasn't allowed to put up a picture of Zendaya. Coming in at 14, we have the eraser. Yes, this stuff can actually be used to rub out pencil. Great on paper for changing your painting notes and works on MDF or card for when you're scratch building. At 13, we have safety. If you hobby around kids and pets, or even if you don't, but they find their way into your room anyway, or maybe you're the one that's clumsy, stick a lump of blue tack on every sharp edge. At least this way, if your kids try to use your hobby knife as a lightsaber, You've got a bit more time to desperately get it off them before bloody chaos ensues. Okay, light. I'd argue the best lamps for mini painting use a daylight setting, somewhere around 5,500 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin. The BenQ has a few different settings to play with, so it can be used with screens where it's brighter at the sides and darker in the middle to reduce screen glare at around 4,000 Kelvin. This setting gives the lamp a much more yellow hue to the light to protect your eyes. Great for using your phone or computer, but not so great for painting minis, which is what we want. It also has a 5700 Kelvin daylight setting shining directly below for paper reading, or in our case, mini painting. Now, I'm not going to profess to be an expert in looks, lumens, Kelvin, or color temperature, because all I care about is do my colors look right, and is it bright enough? And those boxes are sort of ticked. I say sort of ticked because this light feels like it's less bright than every other light I've used. But after some playing around, it just focuses the light to the center rather than all around the room. 
So if you're looking for a lamp that's going to illuminate your entire room like Yankee Stadium, this isn't it. But I'm using it for lighting miniatures, and the clue there is in the size of the thing I'm lighting. At number 12, we have sculpting practice. Now, I'm not the greatest at sculpting for models, especially figuring out what I want it to look like before it starts to harden. With blue tack, you can practice making your bits before pulling out the green stuff. This way, you'll know the process and tools you might need before you start the countdown to a rock-hard, unsqueezable green blob. If anyone has ever knocked over a full pot of null oil, number 11 can be a lifesaver. Holding your Citadel paint pot with this stuff is a very good way to keep it steady. And as an added bonus, you can stick a big ball to the lid to stop it flipping closed. It saves you buying one of those 3D printed pot holders. Or the Citadel three holes in a block of plastic unspinnable fidget spinner. If you're anything like me, when you're in the middle of a project, you can have tools and stuff just lying everywhere. Your hobby desk looks like kindergarten at the end of a long, stressful day with messy toddlers. With blue tack, you can just stick your tools to a wall right next to you. Even stick bits and bobs you need access to right where you can grab them. It's not strong enough to hold beer bottles, sadly. I tried. I have to admit, I'm a sucker for great product design and cool aesthetics, and this lamp wouldn't be out of place lighting up an art gallery. It's 94% made of metal, yes, not just another plastic lamp with LEDs sold in at a premium price. And the lamp head is connected by a ball joint, which they go to great lengths to tell you is patented. But that's all marketing speak for it's a light on a bendy arm that you can move around. Nothing new there. I guess the unique thing about this is the light bar is curved, allowing it to help reduce eye strain. As I said before, this means there's a central focus to the light and a lot of fall off at the edges when painting minis. And when using a screen, it can be dimmer in the center and brighter at the sides. Now, you may hate this. I admit it took me a while to get used to the idea that it's dimmer at the sides because, as I said before, it makes the entire lamp feel less bright than everything else I'm used to. But when I'm wearing my magnifying glasses under a bright light, I often end up with a headache after a few hours, which didn't happen with this light. Now, that could just be a coincidence. I don't know. I'm a hobbyist, not an optometrist. But I can't sit under this light for longer than my Neatfy one without feeling like my eyeballs are trying to crawl out of my skull. At number nine, maybe you want to see what something looks like before committing to glue. Maybe you need to take a measurement before cutting. If you're doing any kind of scratch building, then blue tech is invaluable for test fitting before you glue anything. Coming in at number eight, this one is for you if you pin models or model heads to a cork for painting. You can use a blob of this to hold them, like, like a pin cushion, then grab one as you need. I actually use this same method when making rivets for scratch builds to keep all my pins in one place. Because picking these up from a flat surface is almost as bad as trying to pick up a Citadel base. Number seven is for those of us who get stressed out at the inevitable ugly stage of a model, which is quite often 70% of your painting time. Grab a huge handful and just squeeze it to let all those cares float away. Or you can do what my four-year-old does and fashion them into little monster fingernails. So if you've lost your blue tack, check your children. Now the BenQ is incredibly simple to use. To turn it on, you can either just tap the metal ring or press the knob on the top. Pressing the knob once allows you to turn it to change the brightness. Pressing the knob again allows you to turn it and change the temperature. Now for mini painting, I just keep it at daylight white at max brightness. Touch and hold the ring for two seconds to turn on automatic ambient lighting for reading. And the light will turn green. Touch it again for another two seconds and the light will turn orange and detect the light in your room. And modify the light sensor for screen reading. I mean, yes, it does some cool things. And after a month of using this, I've honestly found that I just don't really use any of these features. Kind of like those 300 buttons on your car dashboard, 80% of which you never pressed because you have no clue what they do anyway. Number six is for those of us who don't have a load of different size clamps available. Maybe the elastic band method would collapse the part. Now use this to hold the part in place while it glues. Effectively using blue tack to temporarily hold the parts together, which is especially good for putting together MDF terrain that can take quite a while before the glue dries. At number five, no matter how you choose to clean your brushes, 
and you should be cleaning your brushes. Brush soap, brush cleaner, brush restorers. The best way to let them dry is upside down. Now, if you don't have a dedicated brush holder, then just blue tack them to the side of your water cup. Whether you're spraying with a rattle can or an airbrush, number four is masking. You can use the blue tack directly on the model or just use it to stick other things in the way to act as a spray barrier. Then when the paint is dry and you're done, just peel it back off carefully without damaging the paint underneath. Okay, before I get onto my favorite final three uses for blue tack in our hobby, I wanted to do an overview on this BenQ lamp because I have thoughts and I wanna be honest. For reading and using screens, this is excellent. And at £200, it's priced pretty much where most of our hobby lights are. A bit less than Redgrass Games, but a bit more than Neatfy. And there's now the Daylight Company coming in hot with some great options. For painting miniatures, if you prefer a wider arc of brighter light in your painting area, then this might not be the right light for you. If, however, you like a light that's going to focus your attention on the exact thing you're doing without distracting you with everything else in your vicinity, then this will work. If you need a light on a stand that you can move around, it's great. And if you read, use a screen and paint under the same light, then it's a good shout as it's specifically designed for all those things. But I can't help feel that this would have been a top contender for a mini painting light had it been twice as bright and £40 cheaper. I'm going to continue with it as for me, it's brilliant for photographing and filming things I need for YouTube. But for you guys, it's going to be your call. Okay, my personal top three uses for blue tack. At number three, nothing beats the ease with which you can stick models and parts to handles with this stuff. Almost every model I've ever painted has been held onto a cork or empty pot, shot glass or makeshift handle with blue tack in some way. Yes, I've used double sided sticky tack, but blue tack always makes its way back out. My entire video on priming was held together with sticky tack and hope. Here at number two, we have the lifesaver when it comes to painting difficult to reach areas on models. I've always been a great believer in if you can see it, you should be able to paint it, especially with things like arms across bodies. And Blue Tech is a brilliant way of holding your model together long enough to spray a prime and maybe even base coat before taking it apart to get at those hard to reach places. All the while keeping the gray plastic covered on the joins so you can glue it easily at the end. Nothing worse than having to scrape away paint just to glue a model together. And at number one, the way I use blue tack the most in this hobby is cleaning sandpaper and files. You know what happens. After an hour or so of sanding plastic, your sandpaper clogs up and just stops working properly. It looks like this and you have to replace it. Now I used to go through sanding files and sanding paper like they were Pringles. Just roll a blob of blue tack all over the sandpaper and it'll freshen it right back up so you can get on with sanding some more. Now, it won't make it last forever, but you'll get so many more uses out of it than you normally would. So there you have it, my top 15 hobby uses for blue tack. If you've got any other uses for Miracle Blob, stick them in the comments and we can create the world's biggest resource for hobby sticky tack. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this will be my last video for a little while as I'm going on vacation, which I haven't had since 2019. And while I'm away, do visit my website or have a look at some of the other videos on my channel. It's a good way to get used to my sense of humour. That way I don't get torn apart in the comments for jokes about the Acolyte. Thanks to my amazing patrons and welcome to everyone who subscribed after my priming video. Anyway, keep commenting, liking, sharing and subscribing and hopefully one day I can get one of those YouTube silver plaques. Because I need something heavy to keep this door open. Only kidding. And that's the state of play for a short while. I'll be back soon.